start is it Okay, so uh, what I am going to teach you today, I am going to teach you about the examination of the chest. The respiratory system examination include examination of front of chest and examination of back of chest. And the examination of front as well as back include four things mainly. That is inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. So as per all examination rules, whenever you are going to examine any patient, you are supposed to do four things first and two things at the end. Never forget these things. That is approach from the right side. Then second is uh, introduction. Third is consent. And fourth is proper exposure. So if anybody asks you what is the proper exposure for the examination of the front of the chest, you are supposed to take the shirt off. And where ethical considerations come into play, you can ask the examiner, so if I have to examine the front of the chest, can I ask the patient to remove shirt? And obviously the examiner will himself tell you that no, uh, it's fine, examine as such. So let the examiner tell you that how much exposure is okay when ethical considerations come into play like when you are examining a female. So then at the end of examination, always say thanks to the patient and recover the exposed parts. So we start the examination and the first thing is inspection. So you can see here on the board that examination of uh, this inspection includes six points. The first one is respiratory rate, second is type of respiration, third is shape of chest, fourth is chest movement, fifth is visible engorged veins, occasionally you can see the pulsations as well and then scar marks. So how to examine the front of the chest? You need to be at the level of the patient you need to be very important point is you need to be here at the foot end from the foot end you would be seeing how the chest movements are so chest movements must always be seen while you are standing here at the foot side of the patient and then you will be seeing and another very important point is whenever you are looking for these chest movements this should be seen while patient is breathing normally and then you would also be asking the patient that breathe in deeply. So in the deep inspiration, you would be looking for those chest movements. So the first point is respiratory rate. Remember, if I will be focusing patient like that, he would or she would develop anxiety. So the rule to assess for that respiratory rate is just palpate the pulse give an impression as if you are palpating the pulse here you have got watch and count the respiratory rate that way patient will not be that anxious so this is how you count the respiratory rate then you need to see the type of respiration abdominal thoracic, thoracic abdominal, only thoracic, only abdominal need to see the chest movement as I highlighted here that you need to go to the uh, foot end and you would be asking the patient to breathe in deeply and then you would be examining for the chest movements uh, then the next is the deformity and shape. So if there is any problem in the deformity of shape, there is pectus excavatum, uh, barrel shaped chest, you need to give opinion related to these particular things. Remember, many a time you miss these scar marks in hairy chest. So if you have got that hairy chest, you are supposed to examine the chest always with some uh, light source in your hand and try to see it underneath those hairs that if there can be any scar mark and in particularly the most important areas where you may find scar mark and which most of these students forget mostly the student forget the axillas remember axilla is the most important part in chest examination it's very important not to forget that axilla portion in addition to that uh, scar marks uh, you need to look for uh, visible and gorge veins. So these points must always be seen, never forget axilla as it is hidden and when you are supposed to look for axilla, you need to move the arms like that, you need to uh, apply the light source, you need to uh, see axillas with that light source always, never forget axillas. So this is all about inspection. Pause. And then after this examination inspection part we move to the palpation part 
remember whenever you are palpating you are always supposed to ask the patient first whether you are having pain anywhere over your chest and if patient say that i am having pain on any part of chest do let them know that i will try my level best not to uh, disturb you not to harm you try will i will try my level best so that there won't be any pain but if still you feel pain do let me know i'll stop that in there so always let the patient know to kahi chhati mein kisi ka dard to nahi aapko nahi obviously these are the areas where there is the apex of the chest here so i am palpating this part and i am always looking towards the face of the patient because you are supposed to look for tenderness tenderness is the expression of facial pain which you see over the face of the patient so there is no tenderness no cavitas the next is palpation of trachea for palpation of trachea you will ask the patient to lift his chin the neck will be in extended position you will place your two fingers on this clavicular head and then what you will do with your middle finger you will palpate these tracheal rings from adam's apple you will keep on moving downward and this is how you are localizing the trachea then the most important point is you just insert your finger here in the supra sternal notch area above that area trachea is very mobile you cannot comment that whether trachea has been deviated towards the right or left side but inside that supra sternal notch you press your finger here in one side you press your finger on the other side and if say your finger is comfortably going inside comfortably going deep on say left side here it suggests that trachea has been grossly shifted to the right side so this is how you comment usually you won't be able to in a normal person you won't be able to insert your fingers deep down because of presence of trachea underneath uh, trachea is slightly deviated towards the right side in normal people so this is how you examine this trachea and remember the whole examination of chest should be done front of the chest should be done with the patient lying flat and a pillow should be underneath his neck and head obviously there should be support of the uh, support in the form of pillow for head and neck the third thing is then chest movements when you are looking for chest movements you need to place your hands like that and you would be asking the patient to breathe in deeply lamba saans mein right and then next is lamba saans mein and then what to do next just above the nipples you are supposed to place your hands firmly touch thumb should be touched but should not be touching with the chest and then you again ask the patient to breathe in deeply lamba saans mein right and that way you see for the chest movement lamba saans so it's enough that you examine here you examine just above the nipple and you just examine once more so three time uh, palpation uh, looking for chest movement is enough then after the chest movements uh, the next next thing is then uh, two things remain in the palpation part uh, after that examination and that is one is chest expansion expansion of chest should not be checked while patient is in, is lying down because you need to place the measuring tape here so if patient is lying like that the measuring tape will just be pressed under his weight so this chest expansion should always be checked while patient is in sitting position so when we will be doing the examination of the back of the chest then i'll be guiding you about this thing and then the next one is the vocal uh, parameters so wherever uh, the chest areas are i'll be checking for vocal parameters main jahan pe apni ingli rakhunga na jaise hi haath rakhunga to aapne bolna hai ek do teen remember use the word 99 some word producing sound like tin tin so that you can hear it in the normal way bole ek do teen ek do teen fir ek do teen fir ek do teen fir ek do teen ek do teen ek do teen and then never forget axillas bole ek do teen so that way you look for this vocal parameters all over the chest remember if you have been given a command to examine the chest wholly then as you are supposed to examine for vocal resonance lately there is no need to look for vocal parameters but if you have been given a command to just palpate the chest then vocal parameters must always be checked right so uh, that's about the examination 
uh, that's about the palpation part. And then the next part is percussion. Percussion is first you are supposed to percuss for upper border of liver and then we will be doing the percussion of the whole chest. The rules of percussion are you are supposed to percuss with your middle finger, percuss over the middle phalanx, middle part of the middle phalanx, percuss preferably at least twice, percuss from resonant towards the dull area. So these are the certain rules of percussion and obviously you can use your two or three fingers if you cannot uh, elicit a good sound by percussing with a single finger, you can use two or three fingers as well. So I am again uh, starting percussion first for the upper border of liver here. So you see here there is menopheal sternai, here there is uh, second red space. So I start percussing here. And here you see the impaired node. So as we are seeing that impaired node, this suggests us that this is the liver, liver area start here. So upper border of liver start where there is impaired node, not where there is dull node. So you just need to percuss like that, you will be counting the spaces and you will be assessing for the upper border of liver that way. When we start the end, remember the rule of percussion is when you are percussing over the chest, this should be hard. When you are percussing over the abdomen, that should be soft. You percuss over the abdomen like that and you bring your ears close to it. But when you are percussing over the chest, the percussion should be hard so that sound can be heard easily. Now I am going to percuss the rest of the areas. I will be placing one of my finger above the clavicle, one below the clavicle and then percuss like that. Here here and then that way and now I will keep on comparing it. And you know that there is area of car cardiac dullness after this second space. So obviously this node will be dull. I have already checked for this area while I was uh, doing percussion for upper water river. So as soon as I will be in second space, I will start percussing the axillary area that way. And similarly that way. So this is how I will be completing my percussion. The next is auscultation. Auscultation include three things. One is uh, breath sounds intensity and character. Second is added sound and third is vocal resonance. So I am not placing my uh, step here. I am just placing it my neck so that I can uh, talk to you guys uh, comfortably. So uh, with the, my diaphragm, I will start auscultating the chest but remember when you are auscultating for apex in that part it's difficult to place diaphragm so you can place if your, your step has got well you can place it there or if this part is smaller one you can place it here so this is how I will keep moving I will keep asking breathing deeply and preferably for two cycles I should keep my steps there like I will be placing my diaphragm will ask the patient to breathe in deeply and as he breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out I will move next to the next area that is how I am continually auscultating for breath sounds so after coming to this area never forget axilla remember axilla is a portion of the uh, lung where all its lobes all its lobes are there in the axilla so you may miss many of findings which are there in the axilla, never forget it. Now in axilla, again I will be asking the same way, here, here, at least two cycles, here, here and then again here. So I have done auscultation here for breath sounds, whether there is intensity is reduced or normal. There is no increase in intensity ever, either it is reduced and reduced is the disease side or pathic side. And then the second is character. So among the character is vesicular with prolonged expiration, then the character is bronchial breathing. And then there is a character of occasionally it is said bronchial vesicular for, for all of you guys, the important character is basically the vesicular breathing in normal persons, then vesicular with prolonged expiration in those who are having obstructive airway diseases and bronchial breathing in the setting of consolidation, cavitation, collapse with patent bronchus in these settings you will be finding this. 
kind of thing. Second is then edit sounds. What are the edit sounds? There are not many edit sounds. Basically, you should be, you are supposed to focus on two things mainly, and these two sounds are crackles and wheezes. So when you will be auscultating the chest, all these areas, where wherever you are finding a sound, and crackling sound is altogether different from wheezes. Wheezes is whistling, and crackles is entirely a different sound. एक कड़कड़ की आवाज़ सी होती है. So you can comfortably auscultate that sound. So you will keep on looking for these two things. But occasionally you can find plural rub. Occasionally plural pericardial rub as well. This mimics uh, this uh, these crackles. But when you usually press over that area where you are hearing these uh, this plural rub, then the intensity many a time increases as you press it firmly. While you are auscultating for crackles, remember you are always supposed to ask the patient to cough. Post tussive. Character of crackles may change if they are just plugging secretions. Like you are auscultating here and you hear crackles, you will ask the patient to cough. As the patient will cough <coughs> once or twice, and again you start auscultating, you no more appreciate those crackles. What does it suggest? It suggests that there is a chance that uh, the post tussive, as you are coughing, that post. Thus, if crackles are no more audible, so these were just plug-in secretions, and these have been removed. And finally, like the vocal parameters again, you would be asked the patient the same way. Bole, one, two, three, one, two, three, and in all the areas, then bole, one, two, three, one, two, three, and that way you will always also be auscultating the uh, axillary. After completion of examination of front of the chest, our next part is uh, examination of back of the chest. Thank you. Uh, auscultation of the back of the chest includes the same thing: inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Uh, important, few important things which you would definitely be missing is like when you are uh, looking for, uh, say, when you are examining for uh, trachea. So you are not supposed to examine for trachea while you are doing the uh, palpation of the back of the chest. So there are few things you cannot uh, uh, assess properly the shape of the chest. So obviously on back you can find some bulge anywhere, you can find something else, you can find scar marks, but you won't be able to comment on that shape properly. However, if patient is having kyphosis or scoliosis, even on back side you can. And if patient is having barrel shaped chest again, you can comment on back. So there are few important things here that you must be knowing. The first thing is respiratory rate. You will be counting respiratory rate, whether this is front or whether this is back. Uh, the next is the type of respiration difficult to comment because you need to look for abdomen and this thing. So this would be difficult to comment. Chest movements. Always look for chest movements by standing at least three, four, five feet away. And then asking the patient to breathe in deeply. Lambe lambe saans le. And then what I'll be doing after these four five feet, I'll be moving here. Lambe saans le. And now I am looking for the area in the supraclavicular region because the apex of the lung is in the supraclavicular region. So I am standing here asking the patient to breathe in deeply and looking for chest movements. And then I am standing here and looking for those chest movements. Expansion. If somebody has been measuring tape. Uh, even if somebody is not having measuring tape, I just simply tell you that we'll be having a measuring tape like that, and I'll be asking the patient. It's it has got centimeters over it, and I'll be asking the patient to breathe in deeply. So as patient will be breathing in deeply, so there would be expansion of that uh, measuring tape. Like there would be five centimeter in a normal person, we expect that there would be five centimeter expansion in deep inspiration, and if it is less than two centimeter, that's grossly Low chest expansion, decreased chest expansion, and that can be seen in many uh, disturbing lung conditions, like in advanced COPDs and many other conditions as well. So this chest expansion should always be examined while patient is in sitting position. We need to look for, we need to expect for scar marks. The way we were examining for those scar marks uh, while examining the front of the chest. Again, never forget axillas. Axilla include in the back. Axilla include in the front. And now, or everything else which we will be examining ahead, 
we will be asking the patient to position his hands like that. ये वाला हाथ इधर रखना है आपने और ये वाला हाथ इधर रखना है. When we will be asking the patient to position his hand like that, how this will help us? Scapula has gone sideways and more portion of lung is available to you for examination. Among the palpation, we start with the palpation again chest movement. लंबा लंबा सांस लें. Initially, I saw those movements on inspection. Now I am seeing these things on palpation. So that way, लंबा सांस लें. ठीक है, लंबा सांस. And that way, लंबा सांस लें. लंबा सांस. So that way, I am examining for chest movements. Again, chest movements can be reduced, or chest movements can be normal, but can never be decreased. And remember, as I have already told you. Even when you are examining the back of the chest, tenderness and crepitus will be the first thing. I have already mentioned you, but here I just add one thing that when you are uh, examining for tenderness, the patient's face will be on the other side. So ask the patient to tilt his face towards you. Ask him बहुत ज़्यादा दर्द तो नहीं नहीं चाहती किसी जगह. And now I am pressing here, looking for tenderness and crepitus, and I am looking towards the face of the patient. So that's how we look for tenderness and crepitus. Next chest movement. Then I told you about the expansion, and then obviously vocal frameters. Vocal frameters. One, two, three, four. Then percussion for percussion as well. We ask the patient to place his hands like that. I will keep on percussing that way. That is the suprascapular region. At least twice I should percuss. Then this is the interscapular region, and then. Uh, the infrascapular region and then i will be asking the patient to move his hands that way you will kar le and now i will be percussing in the axillary areas so this is all about the percussion dobara aise niche kar le ye wala bazu idhar aur ye wala aap idhar aise kar le after completion of that percussion the last thing is oscillation In the auscultation, again, uh, the supraclavicular part is seen examined with the bell. I will be asking the patient to breathe in deeply, lumbar base sounds clean, and at least two cycles should be completed. Then, in supraclavicular region, lumbar base sounds clean. Supraclavicular region, then interscapular region, and then infrascapular region. So I will keep on. Oscillating for breath sounds intensity and character, and then I'll be asking the patient to move his hands like that. You put it here, and now I'm examining this. Now, what's happening? So I'm asking the patient to breathe in deeply. Preferably, that should be done in two cycles of inspiration and expiration complete. Okay, okay, we check that. And then the last thing is, as I have already told you, in all these areas where I've done this auscultation, I'll be looking for. crackles i'll be looking for wheezes and in crackles i'll ask always be asking the patient to cough so that i will be checking for post tussive crackles and finally exactly in these areas i'll be asking the patient to speak 99 or 1 2 3 yani ye do teen teen ki awaz nikalega wo so i'll be asking him 1 2 3 1 2 3 ye bolte jaye aur i'll keep on looking for vocal resonance interscapular region infrascapular region and then on the sides phir upar kar le and then on the sides i will be asking the patient to keep speaking 1 2 3 or 99 theek hai now listen carefully that there are five areas where you will be doing this examination supra clavicular suprascapular interscapular and infrascapular And then axillary region. So there are five areas when you are doing examination of the back of the chest, and there are four areas: supraclavicular, infraclavicular, inframammary, and lateral mammary. So remember, four areas: front of the chest, five areas back of the chest: in uh, supraclavicular, infraclavicular, inframammary, and lateral mammary. So whatever examination we have done till now, we did all the examination focusing on these areas. Thank you very much.